The remnants of Hurricane Ida have left a trail of devastation and paralysis. At least 24 people are dead after the storm battered eastern states with record rainfall. Rescuers are still racing to save people trapped by floodwaters, and forecasters are warning many rivers will continue to rise. States of emergency are in effect across the region, and U.S. President Biden has promised federal assistance. New York underwater. The deluge turned roads into rivers, and subway stairs streamed into waterfalls. The flooding forced airports to close and the mayor to declare a state of emergency. Neighboring New Jersey suffered a similar fate. It may no longer be a hurricane, but as a downgraded tropical storm, Ida is still wreaking havoc, now in the northeastern US. In Pennsylvania, Maryland and Virginia, the storm prompted thousands of evacuations. Residents were shocked at how quickly it brought about its devastation. It was pretty quick. Um, wind, maybe five minutes. And then just everything was decimated. So I uh, turned off the radio and just heard everything. There like the roof, everything collapses. Ida made landfall as a Category 4 hurricane in Louisiana on Sunday. The storm disrupted electricity and water supplies for millions of people before it tracked north to cause further damage, with tornadoes and extreme weather hitting New York, where several people have lost their lives. And in neighbouring New Jersey, empty and abandoned cars sounded the alarm as an eerie backdrop for the rescue and massive cleanup task ahead. And for more on this now, I am joined by meteorologist Matthew Capucci. Matthew, it's good to have you with us. People obviously are asking, how is it possible that Hurricane Ida, that was downgraded from a hurricane days ago, was able to move over thousands, thousands of miles of land and still drop rain on New York as if it were a hurricane? That's a really good question. It was something called baroclinic instability. In other words, the storm was no longer a hurricane. It acquired a cold front, and that helped squeeze all the moisture out of the air. So you had mid-latitude forcing, pushing that air upwards, and a juiced-up tropical environment that made for a lot of rainfall in addition to tornadoes. Now, where I am right now, I'm in Annapolis, Maryland, just east of Washington, D.C., the nation's capital. You can see behind me serious damage to these homes, trees toppled. These roofs have all been stripped off of buildings. That's all thanks to what happened with that storm just the other day as that tornado came through. And farther up the coast in New York, hellacious flooding for millions. Let me just ask you, we're having a little bit of problems with your signal, um, Matthew, but we're going to continue on. Where are we headed, though? We, we've heard that this supercharged extreme weather is going to happen more often and that this is the new normal. So what can weather forecasters do to make sure that people are not caught off guard as many people were last night in the Northeast? I think the biggest thing is that we had a really good forecast. We knew this would be a significant storm. We knew there'd be tornadoes. We knew there'd be a lot of rainfall. But even the best forecast is useless, but it doesn't get out to the public. So we need to figure out how to better communicate to people. We need to figure out how to tell people, this is not your ordinary one of the mill event. This is a high-end event. You see behind me that tornado damage in Annapolis, Maryland, with folks who weren't expecting a tornado, even though we told them for days tornadoes were coming. And so that's the biggest thing. Even if we're really good scientists, we need to be really good communicators, too. And this shouldn't really be a surprise. I mean, we've been talking about the effects of climate change now for a very long time. Um, does it have to happen, though, like this before it sinks in to the public consciousness that climate change is here to stay? I think it does. I think, honestly, nobody really thinks much about a tenth of a degree Celsius per decade. No one really thinks much about two millimeters of sea level rise because we can't see it. We see climate change manifest in disasters like this, where you have a weather extreme that is enhanced, made more extreme by climate change. For every degree Celsius the atmosphere warms, for example, it can hold about 7% more water. 
So a little bit of warming, for example, in New York last night, means the atmosphere can hold a lot more water, dump more rainfall, and give torrential rainfall rates. A lot of areas set one-hour record for rainfall rate records. For example, uh, we had that in New Jersey with 3.24 inches one hour, more than eight centimeters in one hour's time. New York, same thing. Lots of places getting a month's worth of rain in just an hour's time. And Matthew, we know that um, hurricane season is not over in the, the northern hemisphere. We've got more storms that are forming in the Atlantic, right? So uh, talk to me about what's in store possibly. So we don't actually even peak in hurricane season until September 15th. That's our average peak. And the back half of the season is usually more active. So we're maybe halfway done. Down the road, we're also watching a couple other systems in the Atlantic, mostly weak tropical waves, but Hurricane Larry was just named recently, is now a hurricane. It's over the open water, but could make a run towards Bermuda in about six to 10 days time. And there are reports, Matthew, of people who are actually now looking, thinking long-term, looking to buy real estate inland. Uh, talk to me, what, what are you hearing in terms of People resettling, leaving coastal areas because they see long term that these areas are simply not going to be able to withstand the effects of climate change. I think that's a great point. I think in the United States, for example, we, we really don't build very well. I'll, I'll be honest. We put houses where there shouldn't be houses. If you have a house on stilts, you're too close to the water. And yet millions of Americans build right along the immediate coastline. And I think in the past, yes, people cared. But now they care more because it's hitting them where it hurts, in their wallet. They're having to pay more. They're not being able to get insurance to cover their, their homes because they're in poorly placed areas. So really it's about building to withstand and building to not put ourselves in harm's way to begin with. So it's both adaptation and mitigation. Yeah, that's right. And dealing with the facts of extreme weather supercharged by climate change. Meteorologist Matthew Capucci. Matthew, as always, we appreciate your time and your insights tonight. Thank you. Thank you.